Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As you know, Reverend Moses is on vacation, and the family is on vacation, so we send out well wishes to them and hope that they enjoy their time off. And I know I need a vacation as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. So let's take a moment of silence, please. To thank God for who He is, for what He has done. Selection by Ronnie Tracy. Yeah. Afterwards, I come back with the prayer. Seen before will never be seen again. 
Father, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time gathered here in your house of worship, Lord. Oh God, we thank you for the small things as well. Thank you for waking us up this morning, able body, able mind, to worship, to praise you, to do the most necessary things that we can do, to pour ourselves a cup of coffee, to bathe, to lay in a warm bed with a roof over our head, hot food, Lord. For the small things, Lord, we say thank you, Lord. Because even in the small things you provide, and we know that you will continue to provide, because God, you are our provider, our care, taker, our comforter. Lord, we thank you for peace right now. Peace in our homes, and our hearts. There's so much turmoil, civil unrest that's going on today. Lord, we need a touch from you. We need that bread of life from you, Lord. Grant us that strength to press on. Grant us the love that your son Jesus has given. God, someone needs love on today. Someone needs to be held. Someone needs to know that you are still God and God all by yourself. That you still have power in your hands. That you are still omnipotent, God. And yet, Lord, you are loving. That you are caring. That you are merciful. Father, hear our hearts this morning. For those that are grieving. Especially the Simon's family, Lord. Would you be with them today as they grieve the loss, Lord? Those here in the sound of my voice, Lord, you heard their hearts and you heard their concerns, Lord. Father, we ask that you move in a mighty way, Lord. Would you touch them in a special way that only you can? We would be so ever gracious. Thank you. Father, I ask that you bless Reverend Green as he comes forth with the work. Strengthen him in a mighty way as he brings us your word, the bread of life that we need. And Lord, I pray that when we leave this place, that we leave better than when we came. We leave strengthened in your word, strengthened in your spirit, strengthened in the love that Christ has given us, Lord. So that we may be that beacon of hope, that beacon of love that someone needs. Lord, have your way today. Usher in your Holy Spirit today, Lord. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus. And for this, let the church say amen.
trick is to get the mask off without pulling off my hearing aids. <laughs> Again, good morning. It is so good to be here. Today's scripture uh, follows in the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Um, the entire chapter uh, is wrapped around the miracle, the miraculous feeding of the crowd from um, five loaves and two fish. Anyway, um, John's Gospel is so beautifully written. Um, we're familiar with the, the, the opening verse of chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And throughout the Gospel, we have this, this mystery of how the Word can be with, with God and be God. Um, the, uh, the unity of Father and Son. And, uh, we study enough, it's also the unity with the Holy Spirit. Um, in many places throughout the Gospel, when Jesus is speaking, um, you know it's God speaking, or God acting. Um, because like, when Jesus walks across the water, uh, scared disciples of the boat say, is it you? He answers, I am. He tries like the I am me, but it, all it says in the original is I am, which is the name that God gave her himself when uh, Moses was at the burning bush receiving his instructions to go set God's people free. Uh, he said, you know, to the bush, to the fire, who, who is it? Who do I call who sent me? What's your name? And the answer comes out essentially, I am. And so, um, may God bless our hearing of the scripture as we hear today's selection from the sixth chapter of John and begins right by repeating the last verse that we heard last night. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The religious experts began complaining about him because he said, I am the bread come down from heaven. He said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How now can you say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from God, the Father, comes to me. Not that anyone has seen God, except the one who is from God. He has seen God the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the man in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats 
eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. And the Lord had his blessing to our hearing the description. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust him more. I need to say how honored I feel to be invited to speak. I love this church. I feel so blessed. I can say this off the cuff, but it's better if I stick to my notes because then I don't ramble on this all time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm blessed to have a wonderful friend in Reverend Moses. Uh, I am just deeply, deeply impressed. I stand in awe of the history of this place. And uh, I feel so blessed just to come here to receive the blessings upon the grace, upon grace, upon grace that's here. Um, blessed by the fabulous music ministry, uh, the wonderful lay speakers uh, that you're gifted with here. For two years or so now, I've come and I felt fed here, eating the spiritual bread of life. And I have, over the, these two years, I've, I've pondered the question, but what would I have to say if I came and if I were invited to speak? I mean, you've got it. It's all here. What, what can I bring? And uh, shortly after Pastor Lorenzo invited me to speak, I, I had one of those uh, goofy dreams. Now, you probably all had some version of that kind of a dream. We just can't get things together. Um, in a nutshell, I dreamed I was uh, at uh, I was at the podium and I was standing up to preach and my notes were scattered all over the place and I couldn't make sense of them and the printout of my scripture I, I couldn't find it anywhere in there and I couldn't even remember what the exact verses were from the lectionary so I couldn't even look it up in the Bible and uh, I kept struggling to kind of pull it together to figure out, oh, how am I going to make sense of this to, to bring a message? And uh, as time just dragged on and dragged on, different groups from the congregation stood up and walked out. And I, I said, I get it, I get it, you know, I don't like it. you got places to go. You know? <laughs> uh, and finally, I just... There was a loyal few who were left, and finally I said, uh, well, I guess this is just some kind of a big clue that I, of what it is I need to say. Um, what I need to talk about is how much Jesus means to me, how much I love Jesus, and what he has done for my life. And thank goodness for a wife who's willing to listen to my goofy dreams. And after I shared, it was, it was a longer version of the dream, if you could attest. Um, Lina immediately affirmed that's what you need to preach. Talk about what Jesus means to you. He's touched my life in, in way too many ways to about all of it this morning, but a pivotal time came when I was just figuring out the ministry is where I'm going. Um, 
It came in the context of my struggling to find my way forward in life after college, after some attempt to pursue a career in the theater and all things. Um, this farm boy descended from a Polish peasant background, uh, trying to figure out my way in an urban setting. And my dad was a World War II vet. He was a dirt farmer his entire life. He was lucky to have made it back to the farm from the war. Maybe with some covered up emotional scars, but physically well and whole. And so he was able to, uh, to participate in the, in the uh, academic, uh, not the academic, the economic, the economic boom that was coming after World War II this remarkable American prosperity. We were the only country that came out of that war where we hadn't been bombed flat. And so we had our factories running and we had our economy running and we had a mission. And just as a dirt farmer, he was able to also kind of work his way up to a, uh, to a, you know, growing up I never wanted from anything. I was wondering, are we poor? Are we rich? In hindsight, I know we were at the very lower end of lower middle class, but we were middle class enough that I had the privilege of pursuing my dreams. And there was enough money to help me get through a very, uh, a very excellent uh, small liberal arts college. And from there, after college, I. I didn't know what, I, I pursued a, a career in theater, but it just wasn't as satisfying. It wasn't like uh, doing these, uh, you know, on the campus in college, it's part of the, it's your social life, it's a part of the community. Um, it just isn't like that out there in the professional theater world. I decided I needed a better script somehow. And it slowly began to dawn on me that that script was scripture. Suddenly, you know, I found myself kind of out at sea in a very confused and conflicted and confusing time. There was darkness in the world then, there's darkness in the world now. So as I continued to struggle to see if I could find a, a home in theater, I ended up going back to my home state of Minnesota. Uh, my day job at one point was uh, driving a school bus for a inner city daycare. But I kept feeling, I, mean, I, I never imagined that, uh, that I would be working in a church. I didn't, at, at that time, I didn't have any time for the church. I had no use for the church. It felt irrelevant to me. But I kept feeling these nudges of the divine breaking into this earthbound world that I was living in. Finding myself hungry and thirsty for some kind of spiritual solid footing. Again and again, the divine perspective just kind of kept hinting at me and it came to me in some dreams, some dreams stuck with me and I said, wow, you know, there's, there's something that's otherworldly that's, that's real somewhere. Um, I remember hearing on the radio in the 60s that the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, the news sometimes would cover just snippets of his sermons, and I thought, what is that? He's speaking with such power. I, I've never heard preaching like that. I mean, this, this guy 
is serious, he knows what he's talking about, and he's speaking with passion and power. I later uh, was struck by something that uh, the great 20th century theologian Paul Tillich wrote that formalized it as spirit is the unity of meaning and power. Spirit is the unity of meaning and power. And I heard meaning and I heard power. And I looked for it wherever I could found it, find it. And uh, finally I ended up at a uh, good old fashioned gospel revival meeting at a Lutheran church in St. Paul. And I had the audacity to uh, to bring my confusion to the preacher in person. I wasn't a member of that church. It was a large crowd there, but I, I, I took the audacity to take some of that guy's time that night, and he was happy to take me to his office. And he prayed with me, and he read a couple of scriptures. Um, one was from the opening chapter of John's Gospel, Whoever receives me, who believes in my name, I will give power to become children of God. And he paired that with a, a writing from the, the, uh, the revelation of John. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever opens, I will come in and dine with them and more. And then he prayed over me out loud. Not used to that. And as he prayed, the, the scriptures that he had read just kind of reverberated and spoke to me. And as he prayed, I remembered. Jesus said at the Last Supper, remember me. We need to be reminded again and again. We need to remember. I keep losing track of it. I remember picture stories of Jesus that I had gotten in Sunday school. And I, it suddenly occurred to me that this, this Jesus, you know, I, I like this guy. <laughs> He's something else. And it just came to me that this Jesus, his story didn't end. It's not that he died and disappeared and was taken off the stage and was never seen or heard of again. He rose in power. He rose up again. He lives again. And that means he's alive now. He's alive now. He's here now. And he concluded his prayer by declaring, claiming the forgiveness of Christ and declaring that in God's presence, this guy was a totally clean man. And I didn't know that that's what I needed to hear. I felt forgiveness for sins that I wasn't even aware that I had committed. I, I didn't know how much this sense of guilt and shame was binding me and holding me back and confusing me. I didn't realize that. But, you know, I found the shackles thrown off until I found the freedom of standing in God's presence as a child of God. Because I opened the door and he knocked. He came in he, to me, even to me, to my place, and dined with me, accepted me fully, and gave me the power to be the person I really am. Yes. My true self. My God-begotten self. My child of God self. Now, don't miss it too hard, but let me can tell you that's not who I am always.
<laughs> you know, I still need to be reminded. That's why I appreciate the chance to preach because it gives me that opportunity to go back and to remember. Somewhere, somehow from that time as I drove the school bus, I knew that it's going to be all right. I didn't know exactly where it was going to go, but I figured it was mapped out somewhere. And all I had to do was just to kind of pay attention step by step and, and fill in the details. And it's been a wonderful journey. And being here is just a fabulous, fabulous part of that journey. To those who received him, he gives power to be their true selves, their God-begotten sons. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory is of a Father's only Son. Or as the Message Bible puts it, the Word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory, like Father, like Son. We all live off his generous abundance, gift after gift after gift. From his fullness have we all received grace upon grace upon grace, upon grace, upon grace. No one has seen the Father except the one who has his being alongside the Father. And we can behold the glory of Jesus. Whoever truly sees him, whoever believes in him, aligns themselves with him, has real life. Here is bread that truly comes down from heaven, truly comes down from the very heart of God. Anyone eating this bread will not die, ever. That's a promise. Not too long ago, and I'll conclude with this, not too long ago I heard it. A colleague of mine up in the Chicago area who uh, was born and raised in India and uh, went to an evangelistic session, uh, preaching session, uh, when he was stu uh, studying in Germany. And he brought back this, this simple formulation of it. For God so loved the world that's a fact. Yes. That he gave his only begotten son, and that's an act. So that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. And that's a pact. That's a pact. But celebrate the promise. It's good news.
from this day forward is up to us. Amen. 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 Ms. Brown, do you have anything you'd like to share? No, I'm good. I'm good. Just praising and getting our children back to school. Yes. And hopefully next Sunday I'll have a few little goodies for them. Amen. 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 Any other announcements? T-shirts, Team Raven, if you have ordered them, they are here to see Angie at the service. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go in peace.